Hi and welcome to Retro Tech Retreat with Mr H. This episode we're going to look at the Garrard SP25 Mark III record deck. Very common in the 70s, it appeared in all sorts of budget hi-fi setups. This particular example needs some TLC to bring it back to full working order. So in this episode we're going to look at breathing life back into a Garrard SP25 Mark III record deck. Before we get into servicing the deck, let's have a quick look at what we've got. Now this is an auto stop start deck. So what's supposed to happen is you can select auto and depending on the speed, it will know, the, know where the record is. Tone arm lifts, swings across the right place, drops down, plays, when it gets to the end of the record, picks up, goes back and switches off. Okay, that's what's supposed to happen. What makes that happen, let's just go this way a little bit, is that lot there. So there's the motor, and then a lot of mechanical linkages and so on. And as we'll see when we start getting into taking this apart to uh, service it, there's more mechanics underneath the platter. There's grease that they used on here, which through lack of use solidifies and just jams everything up. So one of the main things we're going to have to do is just try and free everything up. But we'll see how that goes uh, as we go along. So that's what we're working with. First thing I want to do is just check and see whether it runs and whether any of those functions, auto functions and so on, work. So let's have a look. I checked the auto start mechanism by switching to auto and seeing if the arm queued. Unfortunately, it didn't move at all. So then I decided I would manually cue it just to make sure that it tracked across the record. It did start tracking across the record. But, interestingly, it only got about a third of the way across. And then it stopped moving. It, there was a definite mechanical stop to the arm moving any further. So we had an instance of the auto start not working and also the arm not tracking fully across the record. So that was our starting point. So switched it all off and then started looking at what was going on inside the machine. First step is to remove the platter from the deck. And the first stage in doing that is to remove the spindle. Then the next stage is to remove that small metal disc in the middle of the platter. That's basically just a cover over the clip that holds the platter onto the central spindle. Just carefully ease that out. Then finally, in removing the platter, there's that clip. And the service manual basically says, gently lever out. It came out reasonably easily. Now that's all out of the way, the platter can be lifted off of that central spindle, revealing all the mechanics on the top of the deck. With the platter out of the way, we can see all of the upper deck mechanics. At the top of the screen, we have the stepped motor shaft and the idler wheel. So selecting the speed of the record raises and lowers the idler wheel so that when you engage it by switching the turntable on, will engage with part of the drive shaft that corresponds to the speed of the record. Now we've revealed the large gear wheel with the cam and the trip pull. The gear wheel engages with this gear around the shaft of the platter. So as the platter rotates, it rotates that large gear wheel. Now this should all be fairly freely moving. The trip pull itself should be completely free to move. We can see the trip pull very stiff and the whole mechanism there's a lot of friction there which shouldn't be there at all so I had to remove the complete mechanism which is a reasonably simple job just had to remove the circlip at the center there just click that off and now we're free to lift the whole mechanism off of its spindle it was a little bit tight due to the, there was some light corrosion on the surface of the spindle. We can see the track that the cam follower runs in and that will need to be lubricated. 
and just checking the trip pole again and you can see it's really really stiff. Now we revealed the central spindle for the platter and spindle that carries the cam. Around the central spindle is a ball race. So you can just see the mark from the original cushion, the small rubber cushion that sat on top of that plate there. That's perished away, so we're going to have to replace that. Lift that plate off and that reveals the ball race. Then there's a bottom plate which sits on top of another cushion, which is actually in not too bad a condition protected down there. They're more or less rubber O-rings. So I'm sure I can find something to replace those with because I'm certain we won't get genuine replacements. This is the cam follower and that should rotate freely on its own little spindle and it's pretty much jammed. So we're going to have to free that up. This part that engages with the trip pull is moving in its track freely. The other important area to consider is the linkages between the controls and the idle wheel and motor drive. But they all seem to be quite free, so don't envisage there being much problems there, other than a little bit of lubrication where it's required. Very important to make sure we don't get any oil or grease on the face of the idle wheel. That's most important. So the jobs we're left with are to free up the cam follower with a little bit of lubrication and clean up the cam spindle and get this trip pull moving and put some light grease inside the cam track. That's the top of the deck mechanism. Then we've got the ball race, we need to put some light grease on the ball race and then clean up the whole area. You can see it's a little bit grubby. Here is the cleaned up cam and trip pull. To get the trip pull moving, I just had to remove that small circlip that holds it onto its spindle on the cam. Then clean everything up with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol, applied some WD-40 with a brush to the spindle for the trip pull, put it back together and now it moves perfectly freely. I cleaned up the top of the deck. I've mentioned using WD-40. Don't be tempted to spray it from the can everywhere because you'll spend the rest of your time trying to clean it up and making sure it doesn't go on things it shouldn't go on. So decant some into a small bottle and then use an artist brush just to very carefully apply it to the exact points where you need the WD-40 to soak in and do its job. So what we're looking at here are the linkages to the stop-start mechanism. And just inside that plate there is a pin and sits inside a asymmetric shaped hole. And then there's a tension spring so when you go to auto and start, that moves the pin down towards the big gap. But that spring is under tension and what should happen is that plate with the hole in it should move under the tension of the spring. And you can see that there. So it should, go, should drop down into that hole there like that. So that plate with the hole in it should be completely freely moving and controlled purely by that spring tension. So that is all part of the stop start shut off and record size lever. So it's jammed and that's probably due to the old grease problem which is common with these sets. So we're gonna to have to free that up. So using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the hinge and we'll see if that is enough just to free it up. Just exercising it a little bit now, when we select the on or automatic setting, that pin moves freely. The bulk of the problems on this particular deck were the dried congealed grease issues on a lot of the hinges. Because the way this mechanism works is through quite a convoluted system of linkages, springs, spring tensions and so on. So you can see here some parts of the mechanism are moving freely, others are very stiff. But I did find lots of grease everywhere. Not sure whether someone had done a re-greasing job at some time and just got it everywhere. So it was just go over it step by step with isopropyl alcohol, a piece of clean cloth, a brush and just 
trying to get rid of as much of the congealed grease as was possible. Some people say you should apply heat and I've seen instances of people applying heat via a soldering iron to specific points which is absolutely fine. I wanted to try to dissolve the grease away. I was planning to re-lube the deck anyway. All the linkages are made of pretty sturdy metal. The biggest thing you got to be careful of are the springs. Some of them are fairly delicate so we have to be careful of the springs and make sure that we don't accidentally uh, stretch them or disconnect them but as you can see there's an awful lot of hinges and linkages to try and clean up so this part of the task did take quite a while once i was happy that i'd got rid of all the old grease then a quick look at the mechanism showed that everything was now working quite freely nothing was jamming everything was moving as it should do in accordance with the service manual now the service manual does call for greasing so I opted to use some very light silicon based grease. The reason being it has a high temperature capability, not that I'm expecting high temperatures to occur in, the, in this deck, but also it, it tends not to solidify like some other oil based grease. The service manual calls for light grease. I have seen when I've looked at how other people have done this job that normal vehicle grease is suitable but my concern is that at some point that's going to solidify as well. Part of the problem with solidifying grease on these decks is when they're left unused for a long time. A lot of these decks come uh, come back into use after they've been stored in a garage or, or an attic or something like that. Hence with that protracted time of, of sitting there not being used the grease solidifies and jams everything up. So the service manual calls for these specific points. There's the cam track, a couple of moving plates that need to be greased. So just applied a little bit of grease. There is always a temptation to put loads on. Uh, I think that's what somebody had done before, judging by the amount of grease that was everywhere on the bottom of this deck. So just applying a, a very light dressing of grease in the areas called for by the service manual and then cleaning up any, any excess and so just making sure that it's just a smear of grease on those parts that need it. Now in terms of oiling certain parts, which is also called for by the service manual, you can use three in one, but what I opted to do with some of the more delicate looking parts was to use clock oil, which you can obtain quite easily online. This is a particularly light oil, uh, penetrates well, and is good for lubricating some of the finer parts on the garage deck. Turning to the top side of the deck, there's not so much in the way of mechanics up here, but there are some really critical parts, such as the idler wheel and the spindles. So for the central spindle on which the platter sits, I used a little bit of three in one. It looks a bit of a heavier duty bearing for the platter, so I decided to use three in one on that one. But for the bearing for the idle wheel and for the top of the motor, I used clock oil. Reassembly was just reverse order of taking it apart, putting the bottom cushion on with the plate. That ball race, I cleaned it off with IPA and then dressed it with some of the silicon grease. Then dropped it onto the spindle, followed by the top plate and then the top cushion. I used silicon grease again on the cam track in the big cam gear that the, that cam follower tracks around. I then applied a little bit of three in one onto the shaft for the cam. I just wanted it to be a little bit heavier duty than the clock oil on that, especially as I found some light corrosion on that spindle. And then it was just a case of dropping the whole cam back in and it went on and off a lot easier. Now everything was cleaned up and lubricated. That went back together very well. Right, so that was the lubrication done and everything reassembled, circuits back on and no parts left over. Now I ran a post-service functional check and this is what happened. Going to auto and here we go. It queued up beautifully first time, no problem at all. The head tracked across the entire record, reached the run out did an automatic stop, withdrew the head, parked it, and then stopped. So I repeated the test with a 12 inch 33 RPM LP, and the exact same thing happened. Cued perfectly.
tracked across the record without any problems at all. And when it reached the runout, it went through the correct shutdown procedure. So I chalked that up as a successful post-service functional test. Right, so we've disassembled, cleaned, re-lubricated, reassembled, tested, and we've gone from a deck that just span a record, if you were lucky, to one where the auto queuing and stopping mechanism works pretty well now, I think. Next stage is going to be doing a setup and then we'll look at the cosmetics. I think it could do with a better enclosure so that's something that we'll do. So if you found this interesting and enjoyed the video please do the usual like and subscribe and do come back and join us when we set up the deck for optimum performance. Look forward to seeing you then.